With each passing day, SpaceX gives fans newer, brighter hopes for the next Starship orbital flight attempt. Yesterday, for the first time, SpaceX has circled a date on the calendar. Starship is preparing to launch as early as November 17th, pending final regulatory approval, the company said on X, accompanied with a cool video. If you're still not confident enough, SpaceX even scheduled an official live stream for the IFT2 next Friday. Activity surrounding the Starship rocket picked up late last month when SpaceX surprisingly conducted a test that can only be described as a wet dress rehearsal. This test saw the company load the rocket with thousands of gallons of fuel and oxidizer to create launch-like conditions. SpaceX also tested the water deluge system at the launch pad, all while working with the Fish and Wildlife Services to certify the pad, fire, and noise suppression system. Besides that, both Booster 9's transport stand and the Raptor installation platform are leaving the launch site tonight, as we're closing in on Star ship's second flight. Finally, SpaceX also completed the thermal protection system heat shield tiles installation on Starship 25 earlier this week. This was also a major milestone that SpaceX completed to make Starship flight ready. This now all depends on the government's decision. Assuming regulatory approval, Musk shared SpaceX's announcement along with his comment. To talk about FAA progress, safety, not speed, should be the priority when conducting launch mishap investigations, members of a U.S. Federal Aviation Administration Advisory Committee say. Amid reports of pressure from companies like SpaceX to add licensing staff to speed up approvals for new launches, FAA committee members instead urged caution Wednesday, November 8th during a live-streamed meeting of the agency's Commercial Space Transportation Advisory Committee, or Comstack. But we're going to put safety first. Polly Trottenberg, Deputy Secretary at the U.S. Department of Transportation, emphasized. Paraphrasing Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, she said the FAA is often told to move at exactly the speed of silicon. Silicon Valley. There's the, you know, there's the move fast and break things motto, and I'm kind of of the move fast and fix things motto. Still, Trottenberg acknowledged the conservatism in the public sector, where failure is swiftly punished among politicians. She emphasized that safety cannot be compromised, but she added, We recognize that we need to find ways to ensure that we're, you know, if we're not moving at the speed of industry, that we're moving faster where we can. Established in 1984, Comstack was formed with the purpose of reporting on critical matters concerning the U.S. commercial space transportation industry to the FAA administrator as outlined in the committee's documentation. The membership of Comstack comprises not only senior executives from the commercial space transportation sector, but also representatives from diverse fields such as academia, the satellite industry, local and state government, as well as companies specializing in services like insurance and legal matters. Functioning as an advisory group to the FAA, Comstack does not actively participate in evaluating mishaps resulting from failed commercial spaceflight launches. During the recent Wednesday meeting, committee members exercised caution and refrained from discussing ongoing investigations, including the one involving SpaceX. Notably, SpaceX's inaugural Starship space launch in April experienced a loss of control high over coastal Texas, leading the company to intentionally detonate the spacecraft and scatter debris over the environmentally sensitive area. On October October 31st, the FAA announced the completion of its safety review for Starship, evaluating the launch's potential risks to public health and safety. However, an ongoing environmental review with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is still in progress. Concurrently, Starship has undergone multiple static fires and SpaceX has underscored the possibility of a launch as early as mid-November, pending regulatory approval. SpaceX's perspective on the FAA approval process has been varied over the years. For instance, in 2021, SpaceX's founder Elon Musk expressed dissatisfaction action on X.com, which was Twitter at the time, stating that the FAA's space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. Musk argued that the regulations are built around a handful of expendable launches per year from a few government facilities. However, on September 8th of this year, in discussing the 2023 relicensing of Starship, Musk quoted that it is rare for the FAA to cause significant delays in launch as overwhelmingly the responsibility is ours. But on September 5th, he noted that Starship was ready to launch and is only awaiting FAA license approval. SpaceX senior officials also told Ars Technica in October, speaking on background, that they want the FAA to double agency licensing staff. The FAA leads the investigation of all mishaps that did not or plausibly could not result in a fatality or serious injury to any person. In cases where such injuries or deaths would be possible, responsibility is led by the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board. Licensing for systems like Starship also can involve multiple 
multiple government agencies or groups as the ongoing environmental investigation shows. Committee members acknowledged that there are more space systems than ever and that launch rates are accelerating. While companies would like the FAA to move faster, safety must remain the primary consideration, said the agency's Michael O'Donnell at the same meeting. But it's really about applying the regulations reasonably uh, so that you can innovate and you can uh, do things differently. One thing I learned in the difference between aviation and space is the the tolerance for mishaps and on the space side is very it's a very different world he explained that the aviation industry tends to fly very similar types of vehicles while in space flight there's also customization every single vehicle is unique the custom builds are part of what makes the licensing process so complex he emphasized o'donnell acknowledged however that the faa's flat budget for space flight investigation needs to accommodate a burgeoning launch industry an order of magnitude greater than it was five years ago to cite just one example space has launched 80 orbital missions already in 2023, quadruple its 2018 rate. One solution may be for the companies to share safety data along with their risk acceptance for certain systems, ranked perhaps between low, medium, and high. O'Donnell said this may allow industry and the FAA alike and then make the determination what the severity is, the likelihood of it happening, and then working from that and trying to build consensus about what the severity is, what the likelihood is, and then work together. O'Donnell noted that the FAA and industry would need to agree on what constitutes safety data, which has been a sticking point. Industry reticence to such sharing has been brought up repeatedly. Given each vehicle is so unique, it is difficult to anonymize information. Representatives heard at meetings of Comstack in October 2018 and again in May of 2023. While SpaceX has been getting most of the attention from the media concerning mishaps, it's not the only one that HSC addressed in 2023. The FAA closed five space mishap investigations this year, such as SpaceX's Starship and a 2022 incident with an uncrewed Blue Origin New Shepard flight, and still has three that are open, O'Donnell said. One example of an active investigation is that of Rocket Lab, which had a failure on September 19th with its Electron rocket that caused the loss of a commercial Earth observation satellite. An electrical arc within a key power supply system was likely at fault, and the company hopes to fly in late November. The mishap inquiry continues, but the FAA did tell Rocket Lab its launch license is still active, company representatives recently said. As it waits for the FWS and FAA's clearance for the second Starship flight, SpaceX is already looking ahead. Its filings with the Federal Communications Commission show that if Starship's regulatory and test progress proceeds optimally, then SpaceX might even conduct the third Starship orbital test flight in December. Flying the world's largest rocket to orbit is crucial for SpaceX, especially since talk in the press once again starts to discuss a potential public offering of its shares. SpaceX's chief and founder Elon Musk has shied away from a public listing due to the volatile nature of the stock market and the risky nature of running a rocket company. However, with Starlink starting to generate more revenue than expenses, pressure on Musk has once again started building. Well, folks, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you'd like to support us even further, you can go ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up today and become a patron to gain access to exclusive content. Content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.